Welcome to Midlife Matters, where we celebrate women's wisdom and wit. I'm Georgianne Lucier, your host, and I am delighted to introduce today's guest, Carla Augustin, who has a community and YouTube TV show called Spiritual Invitation. She's a teacher, writer, and speaker. Welcome, Carla. Thanks, Georgianne. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted. I've been so excited about this. <laughs> well, now you're on the other side of the chair, of the table. I've been looking forward to it. And your TV show has featured over 50 women in the last three years. Mm -hmm. So share with our audience some of the topics that have been covered and how women go about talking about their... Um, exploration of spirituality. Mm -hmm. Well, I've actually had both women and men on, um, and they come on to share different experiences. So I've had practitioners come on, people that offer acupuncture or uh, shamanism, naturopath, uh, past life regression therapy, things mm -hmm. along that line, and they explain what they do and how it's beneficial to others. I've also had people on that uh, they've had very inspirational stories where mm -hmm. they've bounced back from a catastrophic illness or severe loss of a loved one, um, uh, combating drug addiction, that type of thing. Also, people that just have spiritual experiences. I had a young man come on that went to a Buddhist monastery in France for three months just to share what it was like. So mm -hmm. the people come on to share their experiences and what it is that they do or offer to others. Do you find that it's somewhat on a continuum in terms of their approach with spirituality? I mean, do you think of people in terms of different groupings or... You know, I'm not always sure what everybody's going to bring up. Like, everybody is asked the same two questions. Okay. When did their spir spiritual journey begin for them, mm -hmm. and how do they define spirituality? And the point of that is that because no two answers are ever the same, right. it happens for different people. Spirituality is something that uh, there are no rules. No one can tell you how to be spiritual. Mm -hmm. People can only share what it means to them or what they've done along their path. So that's what it is, is just people sharing and presenting uh, their own spiritual journey. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love uh, meeting the different people. I I'm learning from it right. as well right. and things that people share. And I'm, I'm in awe of what people deal with in mm -hmm. life and how they've uh, been able to um, you know, resurface again mm -hmm. and carry on with life. And that's, that's where I think spirituality is a gift in that way, is that spirituality can't always fix things. Mm -hmm. It can't prevent things, but it can offer comfort and can bring people peace. And you gave yourself a very special 50th birthday present. Tell <laughs> us about that. I did. I decided I had been on my own journey for about 10 years, and I had discovered the world of angels and communicating with angels. And during virtue is uh, a big deal in the angel world. And she offers a week-long angel therapy practitioner class. Mm. And so I just felt called to go. I didn't really know why I was going. I didn't know what I was going to do with that certification, but I just felt really called to do it. And so off to California I went. It seemed really extravagant at the time, but I, I justified it with it was my 50th birthday present. Mm -hmm. And when I was there, of course, it was wonderful being with like-minded people. But on the last day, I thought, I have to go back home and teach this. Mm -hmm. I have to share it with other people. And this was hugely out of my comfort zone. This was something, I am a very quiet person. I, uh, I'm extremely introverted. I do not get up in front of people and speak. At least I didn't 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I just felt so called to share. And I was scared to death to teach my first class. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I just did the work and got out there. And I discovered that the, you know, the universe really doesn't let you fail when you're following your passion. Uh, you do have to be the one that does the work. I had to plan the classes, organize the classes, show up for the class, uh, and teach it. But uh, it's, it's really your passion, I think, overrides your fears if it's something you really want to do. And what were you doing prior to that time? So I worked at a senior center, and then I left that to really pursue 
uh, spirituality um, full time, just mm-hmm. taking classes. I went to a, a healing school and I just discovered the healing arts. And it just one thing led to another and it, it just took off. So I slowly opened up a little practice and then I began teaching and then I started teaching more. And it just grew and it grew to the point now where I do have the television show. And, uh, you know, you just keep taking one foot in front of the other. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just so open to, I don't know what's coming next, but I'm excited and I'm open to it. Were people in your life and your acquaintances surprised at your change? <laughs> yes, I, my husband's still saying it. Okay. I, mean, I mean, well, I guess he stopped a couple of years ago, but for the longest time, he would say, I really can't believe you stand in front of people and mm-hmm. speak. He goes, I just can't even get over that. And, uh, and he said to me recently, if someone said to me 20 years ago, um, who is the last person that you know that you think would ever have a television show? He goes, I would have said you. So So I take that just as a great compliment. And, uh, and, you know, I'm I'm proud of myself, you know, that I, it can be scary putting yourself out there. And I, I fully empathize with that, but so worth it. And since you were 50 when you did this, what thoughts do you have about um, kind of what was working for you and against you in terms of doing something different? Because that's not often an age that someone takes a big leap. Certainly many guests on my show have done it, but that's one of the things that we talk about. Right, right. I think, well, what happened to me was, is that I was 40, mm-hmm. and um, I had this wonderful life, and I was not happy. And I kept that to myself because mm-hmm. on the surface, it was a very happy life. I love my husband, my children, my home. My, I had a part-time job. I loved it all, but I wasn't happy. And when you face yourself when you're alone and you can't genuinely say that you're happy, uh, I, I just didn't want to live like that. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. I just thought I, I couldn't blame anyone Mm -hmm. you know I couldn't it wasn't anybody's fault I couldn't blame my husband it wasn't even my fault but it was my responsibility I felt as though to figure it out and to get there and and so I sort of wandered into therapy and just started dealing with you know some childhood issues and blah blah blah, and then on it goes and just the healing began Mm -hmm. and I just grew into myself and I think just really found my own. I think of myself as a late bloomer, Mm -hmm. but I just found myself and uh, connected to my soul and, you know, what it is that I wanted to do. And I just, I've never looked back and I just keep going. And it's another thing that I love about spirituality is that it just, you're just always evolving. It Mm -hmm. never stops. You don't arrive at Mm -hmm. spirituality. You're not done with spirituality. It's just a continual continual process. So it was really a 10-year period from the time you were about 40 until you gave mm-hmm. yourself that gift to go It took a to long California. time. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I'm talking late bloomer. No, yeah. it's, <laughs> I took my time, turtle pace yeah. for sure. Yeah. But that's okay. Yes. That's what I like to tell people. It's all right. Take your, mm-hmm. there's no hurry. It's life. Uh, do what you have to do. But mm-hmm. yes, it took me a long time to really get myself uh, get myself out there and take those chances. So it sounds to me like even though it was out of your comfort zone to even contemplate being in front of people and, you know, sharing your passion, mm-hmm. you had a lot of years of preparation, even though you didn't necessarily know that's where it was. I didn't headed. know that's where it was going. No. I didn't know, but I just started, I, I mean, it was insatiable really in terms of just understanding mm-hmm. different topics. And I just found myself so curious about uh, natural healing ways and um, psychics. What's that all about? Mm-hmm. And I found myself in mediums. And so I just became very experimental and just would would go and um, visit people and mm-hmm. listen and go to talks, go to classes, wow. workshops, that of type of thing. A lot of exploration. I went back for my master's at that time at the Edgar Casey School. Mm-hmm. And it's called Atlantic University. And I did a, a distance um, program with them. Uh, I continued to take classes at the ARE. I uh, did a two-year spirituality program at Mercy Center. 
um, and, I, and I continue to, do, you know, mm-hmm. continue to uh, study. It, it just, it won't end, and I, and I don't want it to. I mm-hmm. mean, it's just so much fun to just read and uh, go visit authors and hear them speak, and yeah, yeah. So recently, and we were just talking, it's been three mm. months today. Yes. I would characterize it as your husband died after a planned um, surgery mm-hmm. and was resuscitated. Yes. Yes. Uh, my husband, John, went in uh, for stents to, to be put in his arteries, and it went beautifully. Uh, they do keep you overnight just for observation, but there was no reason to believe anything was going to happen. It was, he was back in the recovery room. It was 4.30 in the afternoon. And he says to me, why don't you go? Why don't you go home? And I said, no, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stick around. Let me uh-huh. stay through dinner. I don't have anywhere to go. And 20 minutes later, before my eyes, uh, he went into cardiac arrest. Now, I didn't know that's what was happening. Um, I, I just knew you know, slowly, um, he, uh, he closed his, he stopped speaking, and then he closed his eyes, and I'm thinking, is he tired? And, and then he, um, started to make a funny sound in his throat, and I thought, is he choking? And then I saw that the eyes rolled to the back of his head. I know now it was just this heaving, but it was really like the death rattle. Mm -hmm. And he had died at that point. I don't know this, but I'm thinking, okay, is it now, is he having a heart attack? What's Mm -hmm. going on? This all happened in two two seconds. But then I just started screaming and screaming for help. So it was a blessing I didn't leave. Yes. Were there any monitors going on? So uh, there was nothing going off. And uh, I was just screaming, screaming, screaming for the nurse, and uh, she came in, she saw uh, the urgency of it, she pressed for code blue, and the code blue team uh, r- um, runs in, I'll never forget their faces, and I'm still trying to figure out, nobody stops and says, by the way, your husband's having cardiac arrest, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong on my own, and the thing is, cardiac arrest is different from a heart attack. Uh, with cardiac arrest, very few people survive because they have three to four minutes to bring you back or you're brain dead because the blood stops flowing. Your, mm-hmm. your heart basically goes berserk. With a heart attack, your heart stops. But cardiac arrest, your heart goes berserk, just stops all blood flow. So people don't come out of cardiac arrest. Mm-hmm. They worked on him for about 40 minutes, and I just, I'm like, is he having a heart attack? What's going on? And then I saw them doing the chest compressions, and then you know, you're just slowly, slowly figuring it out mm-hmm. that this is just so serious, what's going on? And uh, they did do the paddles twice, and but they brought him back, God bless mm-hmm. Code Blue teams, and uh, they did bring him back, they stabilized him, and there was nothing wrong with the stents. It was one of these very rare occurrences where his heart had an extra beat at exactly the wrong one 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 hundredth of a second that wow. your heart beats and so that's what caused it so they told him it was the most unlucky day of his life as well as the luckiest day of his mm-hmm. life uh, when it happened but yeah it was it was the certainly the scariest thing I'd ever gone through oh thank you for sharing that story and and how did that uh, how is that affecting you spiritually? Yeah, it's ongoing. In every realm, I know. right? <laughs> I know. It's, it really, it, it is. It's really ongoing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, that whole week and, and since then that I was in the hospital, I just kept thinking about it, reflecting on it. And I would say it, it catapulted me to a place where I really felt, and I still feel, that I will never worry about anything ever again. Mm-hmm. I mean, working on not worrying was something that was like a goal of mine. That mm-hmm. it's just, I know it's wasted energy to worry about things I have no control over. So it was something I was doing on my journey. But this, this showed me that there's no point because he literally was speaking to me and in one second was gone. I mm-hmm. saw that. It wasn't a long illness. It wasn't a you know, a big accident. It was just, he was just gone. You know that, but you don't, I lived it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You can know yeah. it on one level, but then living it. So if that's how fast you can go, then why am I wasting 
any time on things I have no control over and on worrying. So my life does happen, and I've caught myself mm -hmm. starting to worry since that time. Uh, but I quickly just hand it over to the universe and say, you take care of it. I'm just going to keep living my life. I'm mm -hmm. just going to keep um, enjoying my life and, and being grateful for every every second. Yes. Yeah. So you really had that shared experience with him because you were there and you were in the drama of it and you were the one who sounded the alarm mm -hmm. and, you know, um, really you went on that path with him. Oh, you do. You do. Everybody yeah. asks him, did you have a near death, which he didn't. But I said, I think I did. Mm -hmm. I think it, for me, it was certainly an exceptional experience. It was almost like I was rising above the whole scene right. and watching them. And I mean, it's nothing like Code Blue on TV mm -hmm. or in the movies. It's a completely different experience. Uh, you know, we've been together a long time, but things like this just uh, brings you brings you closer. Mm -hmm. Definitely brings you closer. I'm, I, I tell everybody, go, go home and hug your husband. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you didn't really have a role in that room, so I could see where it would put you in that observer status. It is. You just, that's all you can do. And right. I mean, I was praying. Yeah. I mean, I figured that was my role. That, mm -hmm. I mean, I was trying to figure out what can I do to help. I right. knew to be quiet, don't create, you know, don't, mm -hmm. don't distract, don't distract right. in any way. I just continually prayed and prayed and prayed. Mm -hmm. And um, and I thought if they stop, my big game plan was, if they stop with the paddles, I'm going to jump in and beg them to keep going. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that, was that, was, that was the game plan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can understand his, it was unlucky and then lucky it was and very that fortunate. you were there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that seems very uh, synchronistic or something. It was that, very right. synchronistic. And he said, it was leave, very, and, you said, no, I'll and stay. I said, no. And, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Ooh. it was powerful. <laughs> so, other than an experience like that, mm -hmm. um, what theories do you have about how women can and do grow at midlife? I mean, you had your own midlife right mm -hmm. at 40. Bang, you were off and going mm -hmm. on your exploration journey. And you've had a lot of guests come on who work with people who share their own stories. So for mm -hmm. our guests, for Midlife Matters, yes. particularly for women, um, what things have you seen really have helped women blossom? I would say uh, it. It sounds cliche, mm -hmm. but find what makes your soul sing. Okay. I think that's very important. I think as women, uh, we can love our careers, love mm -hmm. our families, love our friends, love traveling, love our hobbies, and that's all, that's all really good. Uh, but as you age, and um, certainly some women have far more responsibilities and that they need to tend to than mm -hmm. other women, but... Typically, as we age, uh, things might lighten up a little bit in terms of caretaking. And so with that extra time, just find something that's uniquely yours, something mm -hmm. that you just love to do. Even if nobody else understands it, mm -hmm. that's okay. Just what what's your go-to? What makes you feel good when you're reading about it, doing it, um, learning about it? You know, what, what is it that mm -hmm. uh, just continues to feed your soul? I think that's important for women to fill in with that. Mm -hmm. You know, if children are grown and gone and, you know, you, you may be lessening with work or uh, just life is getting very routine. Mm -hmm. and, but find, find something that's uniquely yours. And I think some people have uh, some barriers to finding what it is, whether it's fear of looking silly maybe someone doesn't right. understand it or thinking uh maybe it's a habit of thinking oh i couldn't do that you yes. know kind of an internal struggle of doing For something sure. very different the confidence maybe mm -hmm. maybe feeling they don't have the resources oh that would take i'd have to go to school i can't do that you know we come up with excuses not a, and not excuses they just, feel real at the time yes and they and sometimes and sometimes it they're very real. real. Right. You don't have the money at the time. Right. You really can't leave your job. You, uh, you are responsible for a parent. Mm -hmm. So those types of things come up. But if it's something that you really want, I mean, there's things I'd like to do and I'm not getting to. That's fine. Uh, but this, this journey, the show, spirituality, that's something that I find time for. Mm -hmm. That's something, and even if it, 
you know, it's up and down, up and down. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But something that really does. So even if you want to go back to school, but the timing really isn't right, just do something online. Take mm -hmm. an online Take class. Take small steps. Takes right? the small steps. Look at me. Like you said, 10 years. Yeah. I mean, look at me before mm -hmm. I was actually teaching and opening up a practice. It took that long. And it's okay to dabble in different things. Mm -hmm. If you go down one row and you think, eh, that's not, I'm not that interested, that's okay. Go find something else. It mm -hmm. can take a long time. Don't don't judge ourselves as women. Yes, don't criticize ourselves do, as women. Right? Don't. It's it's okay if you haven't found something, mm -hmm. but know that you deserve something. You do nice. deserve something. Yes. Yes. I I saw one of these saying on Facebook that I liked about um, if Plan A doesn't work, there's 25 more letters in the alphabet. <laughs> I like know? that. Yeah. I like you know, that. There's A B yeah. C D E. I mean, exactly. there's a lot of different ways. I call it zigging, zagging that we get good constantly, at. Constantly. Right? Constantly. Yeah, just keep zigging and zagging. Mm -hmm. You don't know. When I look back at it now, probably starting at 20 mm -hmm. is when I began to dabble. I took Tai Chi 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. I uh, was looking into natural cosmetics. I mm -hmm. was investigating herbs. I was looking into different things. And my husband used to say, you're always dabbling in something. And I mm -hmm. thought, gee, why can't I be one of those people that has like a real hobby and she sticks to it? Mm -hmm. You know, I tried knitting and that didn't last. Tried all these things and nothing ever lasted. But I can see that for 20 years and then boom. It's like a thread. Oh, yeah. just, yeah. You don't yeah. realize it when you're going through it, mm -hmm. how it is all connected. Mm -hmm. And then you can look back and, and see, geez, I was always interested in that mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so many women will say, I've always wanted law school, you mm -hmm. know, but I never did. I didn't have the money. I did. I had children. I didn't have the time. And then it's just like, well, that's okay. Start reading law books. Start. Mm -hmm. Start it slow. Even my master's, I always wanted that. It took me seven years in a two-year program. Mm -hmm. It took me seven years. But again, I learn, you learn humility and stop criticizing myself. Stop. I'm, I got it. I did get it. Mm -hmm. But it just took a long time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so as we're talking about being reflective and mm. saying, oh, I can see some pattern, trends, connectivity, if you could write a letter to your 25 and then 40 year old self, what things would you be sure to say? I love this question okay. that you asked this. I love it on your show. Uh, I would say to my 25 year old self, you are enough. You're enough as you are. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be perfect. Stop trying to be perfect. It's not possible to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And perfect won't make you happy. Just know that about yourself. Uh, my 40-year-old self is when I started on my journey and all. And I, to her, I would say, good girl. Oh, like, nice. I'm proud of yeah. you. I really am. I know it's not easy. It is going to take a lot of courage mm -hmm. to do this. Uh, but you can do it. You will let go of being perfect. And uh, you will really, really be engaged in your life and happy nice. with your life and your choices. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about birthdays? I love birthdays. You do? I do. I, I love birthdays. I mean, it's the day you were born, and mm -hmm. I, I'm happy with anybody else's birthday. And the biggies that came around, you know, the decades, 30, 40, 50, I was okay with them. A lot of women I knew, 60 was a tough one. Mm -hmm. And so as I approached 60, I kept thinking, it's going to be hard for me. Or how am I going to deal with this? And what am I going to feel? And once I did hit it, uh, I... You know, it was almost like I thought, geez, you're getting up there. You know, <laughs> you really are. You are getting up there. And uh, and I thought, gosh, how do I feel? I mean, it's a great time for reflecting birthdays, mm -hmm. definitely what you want out of life. But I had this aha moment where I thought, how many women don't make it to 60? Yeah. And they and and I'm going to complain. And I, I got there. And so it's almost like I, I made a vow mm -hmm. out of respect. Uh, an honoring of women who don't make it, women who don't know what it's like to retire, will never experience watching their children grow old, you know, grandchildren mm -hmm. travel. They'll never know that. So I thought for all those women, I, I'm going to show you what 60 looks like and just recently what 61 looks like mm -hmm. and just really, I'm going to enjoy it. I will never complain. 65, 70, 75, 100, 105, like I will <laughs> never, I'll never complain. I will yeah. just really try to live well. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. 
And your favorite quote? I found this when I was 40, oh. and I thought, I'm, I'm going for this. Mm -hmm. And it is, you can take no credit for beauty at 16. Mm -hmm. But if you're beautiful at 60, it will be your soul's own doing. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. And here you are at I 61. Know. <laughs> yes. Beautiful, and it is your well, own doing. Well, thank you. Doing. You too, I Absolutely. might add. <laughs> thank you. Carl, this has been wonderful, and I look forward to seeing future episodes of your show, Spiritual Invitation. It's out of Brantford, and it's Correct. on YouTube. It's on YouTube. To you. Please tune in to hear other fascinating women on future segments of Midlife Matters. I'm Georgianne Lucier, your host. Thanks again for joining us.